from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now today's soap, I'm going to be making a soap sort of really aimed at either Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or anyone who likes flowers, I guess. So what I've done is for the I Dream in Soap shop, I've actually made some discs to make some roses. So I've made a couple of discs that will join together to give you a sort of a rose bud with a stem. And then also, I've made a more complex rose. And the idea behind this one is, you can make roses and things, and I've got a video doing it, where you actually use some sort of like polymer clay techniques and you make canes of very elaborate roses. And there are some people that are brilliant at doing this, and I've had a go and I'm sort of okay at it, but they take absolutely ages and ages to do. So I'm hoping by using my little set of extruder discs that I've designed here, you're going to get the effect of a rose, but sort of see some of the petals in it. And obviously this is going to be an end bed that goes all the way through the soap. So it's a three-part disc, and as I said, it will be available in the shop. Now the difference between that and this disc here is the rose flower on this. It's just going to be a single outline. But I'm hoping that with these discs, you'll actually be able to see the petals in the flower of the rose. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've rolled out some soap dough into shapes that are going to fit into the I Dream in Soap extruder gun. And I'm just going to load that up. So first of all, I've just loaded up my large extruder with the disc with two bits of petal on, and I'm just going to start extruding that out. Now one thing I would say to be aware of, if you are looking at getting a large extruder at all, um, and use discs like this in, these are quite small cutouts. So therefore there's quite a lot of pressure behind that for the soap dough, which is quite a big area to squeeze out of a small hole. So if you're someone who has maybe problems with your hands, not very good hand strength, aches and pains, you may find that something that's a little bit difficult to do. When I have smaller discs, I sometimes just do them with two hands on the end, but it's just a little bit of a, you know, up front. And the smaller the design, the more difficult it is going to be for you to squeeze it out of the extruder. rose what we're going to need to do is to join it together now there's several a, a couple of ways that you could make these different rose petals stand out you could extrude the rose petals in slightly different colored shades and then they would stand out nicely and they would show they were separate petals I've done mine all the same color so what it means is that as I put these rose petals together I just want to have a tiny little border between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, I've chosen golden shimmer, a little bit of soap dough, and I'm just going to make it super, super soft. And I'm going to do this by kneading it. In theory, you could make yourself a little sort of soap glue by adding water to your soap dough. If you're going to do that, make sure it's distilled water, because remember we want to be super clean with everything. I find that's really tricky because it then makes everything sort of quite slippery. So I'd much rather get tiny weeny bits of soap dough. And then from those, I'm just going to spread it very gently. And it goes on quite nicely. If you've just got nice smooth soap dough, just spread it into the bits where those two areas are going to join together. Okay, and once we've got that, we can take our second rose, and at this point, I am going to add a little bit of water. So I've got some nice, clean, distilled water here. And a nice, clean paintbrush, and just the tiniest amount of water. It is important at this stage to use distilled water. Okay, because remember, soap dough has already saponified 
so we want to make sure everything's as clean as possible. And then I'm just going to join these two together. And I'm going to push them in reasonably hard because remember what we don't want is we don't want to have any gaps between them which would then show, wouldn't it, in our final soap. And then we'll do the same thing to get the final bit of petal on. So I've been making some little roses for the top of the soap and I'm just going to show you how to do those. So I've got here just a little bit of cling wrap, as you can see I've just used it time and time again. And I've got some of that same colour soap dough that I used for the rose inside and I've just mixed a little bit of gold with it so it's a little bit mottled. And all I'm going to do is just pinch off some very small bits, roll them into a rough ball and just drop them onto this sheet and I want five of these and can you see here they're really tiny make sure you keep them nice and small because you want them to fit onto one bar of soap okay so once I've got my little five balls on there you can do more than five if you want but I think five is a good number then I'm just going to fold that up and then I've got some of these what they call ball tools they're very easy to get um, on Amazon and places like that or you can just squash them with your fingers that's what I always used to do and then you're just going to squidge these balls flatter and then once you've done that just certainly on one edge give them a really good squash and try and get them as thin as you can and I'm working on a foam mat here and that that helps you not sort of break them Okay, so really squash them down and using the cling film helps you with this, it stops them sticking. Okay, so now I've got some little squash bits. Now as well as you can just squeeze them between your fingerprint tips if that's what you wanted. So if I open up my cling film carefully. Okay, I've got my five little petals. They're all slightly different shapes and that's fine. So just find what looks like the smallest one. And what I'm going to do first of all is just take that very small one and just literally roll it between my fingers. Okay, so that's just rolled up. It's really, really tiny. Hopefully I can zoom in enough so you can see. And then I'm just going to carry on picking up these extra petals, finding the thinnest edge that I can wrap that around the little bud and just squash it at the bottom and then let's take our next one and again find the thinnest edge or even squish it down a bit more and what you want to do is start about halfway where that last petal finished wrap it round again and you can always bend out that petal a little bit and squash it in Let's go and put the last ones on. Okay, so it's a very simple process. And it's great if you're not that great on piping, it's another way to make nice roses. So again, squash that one on. And the last one. And then I just give them a little squeeze at the bottom and that's quite cute as it is but you might think I want to have it a bit more of an open rose so at this point you can always just take any sort of tool and push those petals open a bit more and just muck around so it's how you want it. Okay so there's our rose and as you can see I've already made some others of those. Now as you can see some of them look a little bit weird shaping a bit long and that's because I've squashed them down at the bottom. So what I'll do before I pop them on my soap is I will trim them down. I'll actually do it with a knife, not this funny little tool, but that's what I've got at the moment. 
Okay, so I will trim them down so they'll sit nicely on the soap. And then just to finish them off, I've got the tiniest bit of golden shimmer mica in here and a little tiny touch of rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to touch the very edges of the petals. To add that little tiny gold tinge, which I think looks really pretty. soap together then shall we so I'm going to do a fairly simple design on the inside just a couple of layers with the embeds in so I've got my oils weighed out for the first layer and I often sort of jump to the point and say oh I've got this already in here but I'm just going to do it sort of from scratch if I'm ever just doing a single colour layer, I don't bother pre-dispersing my micas in oil and then putting them into my soap. I will just add them straight into the oil. Now, here I just want a very, very light pink. Here's it. I've put about a third of what I would normally use to colour those oils. And this colour is the same as my soap dough. It's Ooh La La from You Make It Up. Now I'm going to add some titanium dioxide to that as well. Now I will still give that a little stir in. And the reason I'll still stir it in before I stick blend it is because of trying to eliminate bubbles. If you push your stick blender down on top of that, it will trap the bubbles in. Whereas if you can get the mica to sink first of all, and give it a little smush around and start it being stirred in, then that's great. All right, you don't get the lovely effect of the mica starting to mix in. Now, to be honest, you could probably just leave it at that point and then start adding the rest of the things for this portion of your soap. But I am just going to give it a little blend first of all, just to make sure we've got that mica beautifully dispersed. Because remember, any time we can stick blend something before the lye goes in, then that's good for us, isn't it? Because it means less stick blending after the lye has gone in. take very much and now once I've done that I can add my lye solution so I've got my lye solution and my sodium lactate as normal just gonna pop that in Now this should lighten the colour already just a little bit, but it's unlikely to be enough. I am planning on adding some TD to this. Okay, so that's too dark for what I want, so I've got some TD. Now I've measured how much TD I've got in here. And so I can tell how much I'm putting in this portion of the soap. Twofold, really. One, if you're in the UK or the EU, you need to measure exactly to the part of the gram how much of everything is going in your soap. 
But perhaps more importantly for everyone is once you get to a colour that you like and you think, do you know what, I think that's a really nice colour, then you know how to recreate it. Or if you get to a colour and you think, oh, I wish that was a bit darker or I wish that was a bit lighter when you look at the final soap, again, you know what you did so you know how to correct it. Any time you're just randomly blobbing bits in, it's kind of like you have to work it out every single time. You know, you're always starting from scratch and always going a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, and that's fine. But if you know exactly how much you use, you then, then know how you can adjust it. Okay, so now I quite like that nice light pink colour. Obviously it will go with my rose, but it will be a bit lighter. Okay, so I'm good with that. So I'm just going to now go and weigh that TD, see how much I used. Now the fragrance I'm using today is Victorian Rose from Nature's Garden. I do like it as a rose fragrance and it's definitely got some of the lovely green notes of the rose to it. And also as well, it's not one of those rose fragrances that massively accelerates your trace. So I've weighed out what I need for this portion of the batter. And in calculating the fragrance oil I need for my batter, I've also included the fact that I've made unfragranced embeds. So I've worked out the total weight of my soap including the embeds and worked out the fragrance oil based on the whole soap. Okay so let's go and mix that in. So as you can see, it's not doing anything nasty, which for a rose fragrance is great. I'm going to give it a nice stir in. It does smell lovely. It really does smell of rose. So I guess if you're one of those people that doesn't like rose, you're probably not going to like this fragrance oil. But um, I like the, the green notes that it's got to it. You can definitely sort of smell the stems of the rose as well. Okay, so I'm now just going to simply pour this into the base of my mould. And I am going to have a slight tilt on my layer. I'm doing sort of like a... A textured layer but I do want it to be higher one side than the other. So I'm just going to take a tea towel, nothing complicated, anything will do, a tea towel, a table mat, anything really. And can you see look this is still lovely and fluid isn't it which for a rose fragrance is great and I'm actually soaping here my oils were actually about 85 degrees and I've got a decent water discount. I use 25% water to oils, which is equivalent to sort of a 35.6% strength lye concentration. Okay, so, which when you think about the sort of Standard 38% in soap calc, that is quite a discount, but that's my standard that I use. Now what you may find with some fragrance oils, especially those that are going to accelerate, is quite often they'll, they're pretty well behaved until you stop moving them. So if I just left this jug alone, this might start to set up quicker than I wanted. And now it's in the mould, it can set up all it likes. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that just like that to start setting up and then we'll texture that top a little. 
So this is now set up. It's literally been about mm, three or four minutes for it to set up. And I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. So it gives you all I've done is just taken a stainless steel spoon and I've just just pushed it into the surface just to just give that surface some texture. No particular design idea at all. I just don't want it flat. Okay, now as much as I dislike them, I'm going to do a very gentle mica line. So I'm going to use some golden shimmer from Mica Mama. So I just popped off there to weigh my pot so I can see how much I'm using in this mica line. Right, so I just put, I put, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon there. It may not really show up, but I don't really want to put more than that on. So I'm just going to weigh that, and I actually used in that mica line there, 0.4 of a gram of mica. I'm out of time, but I'm still thinking of you. So we've got our set batter to a nice piping consistency so that it holds its shape. It still sort of sticks onto your spatula, but it's not completely solid. So I'm just gonna fill up this tiny weeny little icing bag, or piping bag. And for this, I'm just doing the smallest little circle, the Wilton number one tip. And you need to be careful when using this tip because as soon as your batter starts to thicken up too much, it gets incredibly difficult to use. And you might find if you swap to a Wilton two or something, there's not a huge amount of difference. Okay, so just holding my bag over a glass just to hold it out. I'm not putting too much in because I don't want to overfill my bag. Now when you're piping on a soap, it really doesn't take very much soap at all to get your piping done. Here I'm just squeezing out any air bubbles. Okay, and all I want to do with this is, I'm just going to hold it so it's fairly tight, and I just want to gradually just do little wiggles like a filigree all over the soap to sort of look like lace.
Here's our soap for the next day. And I'm really pleased with that top. Those little roses look really cute with their gold bits on them. And I like the piping. It's just come out just lacy enough, I think. So I'm going to get this lined up to cut. smell absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so there's our little roses soap. That Michelin is, you can kind of just see a tiny little bit um, in there and we've got the slight separation in the petals. It's the first time I've used this disc. I think I could have done with maybe a little bit more of that golden shimmer soap dough between the petals to highlight them a little bit more. The effect has worked sort of better on the slightly lower down one. Okay, so you can see this one, the effect I think has worked really quite well. This one, you can still see the separation of the petals and I think, I say, just a tiny little bit more soap dough in between those would have been good. And as I said, very, very tiny Michelin, but as you know, I did that deliberately, just so that it was a very, very faint Michelin with those. I'll just leave you with a final couple of photos of the soap. If you are interested in buying any of the tools or anything that I use to make my soaps, they are available in the I Dream In Soap shop, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I hope you like this soap and you've enjoyed this video. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!